which team can really flip the table and shake this draft up uh, with the top 10 picks? I'm looking at the Indianapolis Colts. Sure. And the reason I am is because so much can happen before they're on the clock. We know the first two teams, and we're anticipating they may just go with quarterbacks. And we know the Colts need one, but out of the top four, who do the Colts like? I think that's the question mark. We look at Shane Steichen, and we saw what he was able to do with Jalen Hurts in Philadelphia, a mobile quarterback, and help develop his arm. And what we saw and what Jalen Hurts was able to produce last year, specifically in the Super Bowl, running and throwing the ball all over the field. Maybe he likes a Will Levis. Maybe he likes uh, a Anthony Richardson. But where do those guys fall? The Colts can come on the clock at number four, and Stroud and Bryce Young can be the one and two pick. Then somebody can jump up to three and take Arizona's spot, and now the Colts are sitting there and just like, all right, the quarterbacks, the top three we had on our board are all gone. Are they willing to go with the number four quarterback if they mm -hmm. really have them rated 25 out of the top prospects in the draft? So they may be looking and say, you know what? No, this isn't where we wanted our quarterback. And maybe they just go with the best available draft prospect. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we can bring Lamar Jackson's name back up hey, on Ron, another day it, on Good Morning it, Football. It, and maybe they go and try to make a trade to free Lamar from Baltimore. Yes, I said free him from Baltimore. I don't care what you guys think. And bring him to Indianapolis. A chance for mm -hmm. him to kind of restart this franchise after they have gone through quarterback after quarterback after quarterback after Andrew Luck has retired. This would be a beautiful sight to see him in a new city in those beautiful blue uniforms. Jim Ursay would be fired up to see Lamar bringing fans into the stadium and him running all over the field. I think the Colts have a chance in that four spot to shake things up depending upon what happens the three spots ahead of them. I'm okay, here's another question it. for you. If you're Colts GM Chris Ballard, you mm -hmm. guys have had a rotating door at quarterback, obviously. It hasn't gone well. The Cardinals are on the clock at three. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, no matter what, say, okay, let's just give the Cardinals next year's first round pick? Like, we don't want to even risk it. We want to get that third pick? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's tough. I feel like if you're, if you're drafting a quarterback this high, the first thing you want to do is be able to build around him to kind of take some of that pressure off. So when you start giving up those draft picks for the future, I mean, you could be pairing him with a hell of a receiver or a starting tackle next year in that first round. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you just give up the house to I don't move envy up their spot. two, three. It's right. If I'm, right? I'm thinking outside. Yeah, yeah, like there you the go. fourth overall pick is a hell of a high pick. Yeah. And I'm going to get the fourth yeah. quarterback and the fourth or, or even the third. If, I, don't, I want my first or second yeah. pick. Mm -hmm. I want my first pick. So it's a tough spot for them to be in for sure. I don't know about the Lamar trade, though. We, we'll keep waiting and waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if Jim Irsay throws in Stevie Nicks' mic stand, he can sweeten the yeah. pot a little bit. Huge right? music. Loves, so that, so. <laughs> Loves it. Um, I'm going after Indianapolis. Mm. I don't think the Seattle Seahawks are used to being in the top 10, and the Seattle Seahawks have the fifth overall pick, but they also have the 20th overall pick. I think it's really interesting because I feel like they hold a lot of the keys to this thing. Um, do they go quarterback? I, if Anthony Richardson or Will Levis is sitting there, do they go quarterback? Remember, they signed Geno Smith, and everyone says, whoa, three years, is it? You look at the numbers, it's essentially a one-year, $27 million deal, and then the next two years, it's really the team's option. They can get out of it. Um, Geno, outstanding last year. He gets the contract. He's 32 years old. But is this one of those deals where you say, okay, Gino, but we don't expect to ever be this high again. We, they bring back just about everybody from last year, which was a playoff team. Mm -hmm. They have all this young talent. Do you say, okay, we have a top five pick. If there's a quarterback there, you take him now and you just stash him for a year. Or you take him now and you trade away Drew Locke and you try to say, okay, it's mm -hmm. Gino versus this guy this summer. I think the Seattle deal is interesting. And, Jane, we've been covering the draft for years mm -hmm. as far as these general managers go and these coaches go. John Schneider has a history and a tendency to trade back, to mm. trade back, to trade yeah. back. Just picks. collect action. Loves, Loves, picks. Loves picks. And if you saw last year, what they do with their picks? Well, they got the uh, Kenneth Walker, probably the best running back as a rookie last year. They got two starting yeah. offensive tackles. They got Tariq Woolen. Yeah. They added Kobe Bryant. They added. <laughs> so, like, they're really good at drafting. What do they do at five? To me, if Anthony Richardson is on the board at five and you're Seattle and you've got all this young talent and you're up and coming and you got the fifth pick because of the Denver yeah. trade with Russell Wilson. I don't know if you pass on Anthony Richardson as a talent and say, at the very least, let's have him and Gino together. And maybe Gino, as much as you think this is Gino Smith's time to finally be QB1, yeah. maybe it's Gino, you're QB1, mm -hmm. but your job is to also mentor this guy and get him up to speed. Mm. That's a good one, Peter. I like the Five. one. Five. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but Bill Belichick's time is over. It's done. <laughs> He's just, just lie down and die. Gerard Mayo's ready. He's going to be the head coach. Belichick's not. It's over. Hope it was fun. Well, or is it? 
Or is there one last zombie Belichick making moves? The Patriots are at 14. I'm going to just sit here right now. What day is it today? It is the 7th of April. The Patriots are not going to stay at 14. I think they're going to do something very aggressive. Even just the optics of the Jets drafting at 13, I think, immediately triggers Belichick. You know that, Jason. <laughs> they hate the Jets. Hate he em. hates the Jets. I think he hates them with a pat. I'm not, I don't think he's sitting there at 14 and taking the Jets scraps. I think he's going to be aggressive. I think he's going to do something bold. Because why the hell not? And if that includes doing something not just bold but radical, like drafting a rookie quarterback and moving on from Mac Jones, and you say, well, then you have to trade Mac. Who's going to trade for Mac? I don't think he really cares. Find somebody who will send him a sixth-round pick for Mac Jones. I'm Bill Belichick, and you're not. Shut up. I'm going to move on to the next guy. I am not going to lay down and die and just wait to hand this thing over. I built this thing. This is my company. I think this draft is a very interesting opportunity for him to do something bold, dynamic, and completely shocking. Whether it's keep that guy or move on with him, I don't know. I just don't think he's going to sit there until 14 and take the, the third best pass rusher or some safety or something and just stock and then be like, oh, we'll try it again. The Patriots nation is unacceptable right now. The team, that team is, everybody says they're about championships. About four teams are. They are about championships. They're not about mm. maybe we can get a wild card and take second or third in the AFC East. Do something bold. I last, can't sit them checking. Last year they were on the first round clock. Yeah. 29th or 27th or to Cole Strange, offensive guard. How'd that go? He's great. Yeah, he's fine. He's, yeah, he's a good fine. player. Exactly. Time. Exactly. He's fine. Packers yeah. every year. This is the year they got to do it. Who do they always take? Defensive player. Like, why is this? Uh, this is Passover. Why is this year unlike any other year for the New England Patriots? Why do you think this changes? Because they're sub 500 since Brady left. It's a different team. It's a different friend. Let's see what the Packers do a couple years from now when Rodgers is gone. It's They do the same thing every year. Fine, then keep 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 doing that thing because Belichick runs the show. I haven't seen him win a playoff game since Brady left. In fact, the only one he was in, he got annihilated in. Maybe you change it up a little bit I like because it. there's a guy waiting and people saying that Belichick's uh, got to get things going here. Mm. I hope he's as bold as his fashion choice at TCU Pro Day last week. He showed up in white shorts a blue button down right in his backpack. He looked like he literally just got back from a clam bake. And as you ah. looked across at all the scouts and the coaches, you knew exactly where Bill Belichick was. Is that right? So I love the book. I love that. Bill. See, I heard Robert Kraft saw his outfit and said he's getting meatier. You know, and they're like, I, <laughs> Bill, you look meatier. He's not going to let me live this down. Meaty. I'm going to work Meaty. on my adjectives, but it was a good one. That's trust perfect, me. This Jane. guy looks like he's been lifting in the offseason. I'll take it. Mm. I'm not getting any of that at home. It's great. <laughs> I'll take meatier. It sounds pretty good. Meaty. Right, don't come Smart at good me. Don't come oh. at me. Oh. go to Medieval Times oh. on Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. That's good, Peter. It's a great place. What do you think, Slater? You know, I'm looking at the Cardinals to shake it up. And hear me out on this okay we there's been a lot of upheaval this offseason cliff's gone you've got a lot of questions about kyler murray they obviously have their quarterback but this is where the non-quarterback portion of the draft starts now they've got questions about d hop now i'm not saying they're going to go wide receiver there but they've got to figure that situation out and then i think the other thing is do they hold other teams hostage that need a quarterback in other words we talk about indy and so I think this is going to be fascinating. Although, if you look at Lance's mock draft, I think it's fascinating what he's saying with Houston, that Houston's not going to take a quarterback there. So I think that's yeah. going to be interesting. But I think the Cardinals is really where this draft's going to start. So I think they have an opportunity to sort of throw this thing into chaos and get us all excited at number three. Hmm. Agreed. It's, it's also they have a bare bottom roster around the league, mm -hmm. so they can go in any direction. Any direction. You're not going to say, well, they need to fill this void. That's the, I mean, what you're looking at right now is Lance Erland. He's got a lot of crazy stuff going on, but at three, he's got Will Anderson. And that is, that's what would you call that? That is just, that's chalk. Like, mm -hmm. that's the mm -hmm. guy, that's the mm -hmm. best defensive player. Right, yeah. But to me, that is a very tradable pick. Is there any there. chance Arizona goes quarterback and says, you know what? Like, we see somebody, we have so Tyler. many, mm -hmm. so many mm -hmm. question marks that, hey, we feel like we need to start over mm -hmm. at the quarterback mm -hmm. position with a young guy on a rookie contract. Would you? <laughs> it feels pricey, though, oh. right? Feel like I'm on a first date. I ask a question and yeah, you follow, say, and you, you come like, right back at me. Yeah. Um, no, I wouldn't. I, I think I would. I would wait and see Kyler get healthy. While he's getting healthy, we have a chance to build around him. Possibly trade back to your point and get a few guys. Mm. Yeah, if D Hop is gone and JJ Watt is obviously gone and Rodney Hudson's obviously mm -hmm. gone, I mean, he's like the last man standing. He's got the huge. I mean, it's it's crazy. We'll talk about Kyler more in the show. Yeah. Steve Kime had comments, but to think that like it's. It's officially like Kyler's team. He's like the senior yeah. leader, and he's yeah. the guy. That sounds it's, great. It's, it's dangerous. Think about waters. the weight on this new GM, too. Yeah, That's yeah. going to be intriguing. All right. Well